Right, and let's move on to Kenya now. The authorities here have banned plastic bags. Environment and Natural Resources Cabinet Secretary Judy Hongo says that the ban will take effect in six months' time from the date uh, of which the Gazette notice comes into effect, and that's in late February. Now, after that, however, the use, manufacture, importation of all plastic bags used for commercial and household packaging will be illegal. The Cabinet Secretary says that the banned plastic bags fall into two categories, uh, carrier bags and flat bags. Now, previous efforts to abolish the use of plastic bags in this country have failed, and it remains to be seen if this latest effort will bear the intended results. The ban of plastic bags has been successful, however, in Rwanda. Let's dig a little deeper into the implications of this ban. Phyllis Wakiaga is the CEO of the Kenya Manufacturers Association. She joins me now in studio. Thank you. Uh, you put out a statement earlier today where you're pretty critical mm -hmm. of this ban or, or on two grounds, potential job losses and six months uh, not being enough time to clear out stocks. So let's, let's clarify this. Are you opposed to the idea of banning plastics in total or are you opposed to the way this particular policy is being implemented? Um, thank you very much for the question. If you look at the plastic issue, I think we should be discussing it in a broader and more sustainable way. The challenge we are having with plastics is an issue of waste management. It's not really an issue of the manufacture use of the plastic, but it's more of an issue around waste management. Mm -hmm. Currently, there's an excise duty being paid on plastics that's supposed to be used to ensure that we manage the waste in the environment. And this is not happening effectively. In our view as manufacturers, a ban is not the right way to go. A better way is a sustainable uh, method around waste management where we look at how we educate our people, create the right awareness, because the consumer behavior is actually leading to having plastics around the country, not the manufacture of those plastics. So in our view, the sustainable way forward is as a country to come up with a waste management policy that is more long term. Mm -hmm. A ban is a reactionary measure that might not address the challenges that come from plastics. So okay. that well, is our position. We'll, the we'll jump into the solutions in a bit. But yes. just before that, was there any consultation or any meetings between the Environment Ministry, Treasury, and KAM? Because you represent, the last time I checked, about nearly 200 companies that are in the plastic packaging business, yes. 60,000 indirect jobs, quite a few more directly. Was there any consultation at all between you and the government? You're right about consultation because it's really the key in, in, in terms of doing legislations and policies in this country. Public participation is central in our constitution and it's important before we make decisions that have a substantial effect on, on businesses that we are consulted. In regards to the ban, there hasn't been a consultation uh, because it would mean that the industry sits down with the Ministry of Environment, looks at the impact of a ban, what a sustainable solution would be in the long term, and that has not happened adequately. So our concern also is that industry was not consulted full, fully. And for something that has the effect that this will have, mm. it needed to be consulted. If you look at the Statutory Instruments Act, we needed to do an impact assessment to ensure that we have a solution beyond the ban. Mm. So as industry, we feel that this did not happen. And we are concerned because for investors, policy stability is critical. And if that is not guaranteed. It's a great concern to all of us. There was um, uh, some of the numbers that I looked at, about 100 or so million um, plastic bags yes. do get issued. And just, this is just by supermarkets alone mm -hmm. every, um, every year in this country. Mm -hmm. what, would, what would it cost for these, mm -hmm. I'm assuming in this argument, that all of that comes from local companies, the one uh, near 200 that you represent. What would it cost these guys to switch over to, say, biodegradable plastic alternatives? The alternatives of biodegradable do exist, but it happens within a broader spectrum because biodegradable plastics are only useful if we have a culture within ourselves of ensuring that we don't throw plastic anywhere. We have to, as a country, move into waste segregation because if you want biodegradable plastics to work, you'd be putting organic waste in them, for example, so that when the waste uh, degrades, the biodegradable plastic also does. So it's not just about manufacturing them, but also moving sustainably towards a culture of segregating our own waste as a country, raising that awareness as our, our students go through school and to the adults, so that we change the behavior of how we completely do our waste management in Kenya. Right. There's something that you mentioned in the statement earlier today, and I'm quoting you here. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, as with regard to the excise duty, unfortunately, it has not been applied to address plastic waste. So mm -hmm. if the solution isn't working, mm -hmm. why not explore the ideas Rwanda has done mm -hmm. of just eliminating plastics 
altogether. Because a common argument that you will run into, at mm -hmm. least in the public domain, is if Rwanda, a tiny country in East Africa, can pull this off, mm -hmm. why can't Kenya pull it off as well? The difference between Kenya and Rwanda is that Kenya is a highly industrialized country. If you look at plastics, a number of the things we manufacture are packaged in plastics. We have banned plastics locally. We haven't banned imported products in plastics. Neither has Rwanda. So I think uh, if we are going to be an industrializing country achieving Vision 2030, the competitiveness of the manufacturing sector is highly pegged on how we package our goods. Mm -hmm. If we are making packaging uncompetitive as a country, we are simply making our manufacturing sector extremely uncompetitive. And what will happen, we are in Comesa. No one else in Comesa has banned plastics. We'll still have goods coming in from other countries in the same plastics. So for us, that is not a sustainable way to deal with this issue. It's more sustainable for us to say, can we have a levy, for example, at the port for all the plastics that come in? And then the difference between what we are proposing and the excise duty is that this money will be ring-fenced for waste management. We can have a PPP with government where we have a board that brings together the manufacturers, the business community, and the government to manage the waste management levy in partnership with the county governments mm -hmm. because waste management is a devolved function. Yeah. So that for us is a sustainable way forward and a proposal we have presented to the government. All right, so let's see yes. if uh, that actually does go through. But thank you for your time this thank evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right.